Weasel, and today we're about to play one of my favorite Steam mods of all time. It's called the Stanley Parable, and I like it not because it's the most action-oriented or because it's the, the biggest sandbox mod. I mean, we all know that goes to Gmod. But uh, it's because this one, I think, on a, on a, on a I guess, a, a kind of a surreal... It's surreal. I, I like it because it's different. You know, you don't see a whole lot of mods like this. And I, I feel like this one is probably one of the most unique. Also, it kind of reminds me of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So... We're going to play this three ways, and they're uh, three of my favorite ways to do it. The first way, we're going to be following the narrator's instructions all the way through. The second way, we're going to do what I consider to, do, uh, consider to be the worst kind of playthrough of it. And then the uh, third one, we're just going to say, fuck the narrator and do what we want. So here we go. Let it load. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Did it crash? And then one day, okay. something very peculiar happened. <clears throat> something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Come on. Oh, right. So, in this mod, you can't really jump, you can't really crouch, you can't really pick up anything. The entire game, all the gameplay is basically dictated by where you go. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. No one's home. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley entered the lounge. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. It's kind of boring, but give it a, give it a second. You'll, I think you guys will like it. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, oh no, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. 
just okay just for laughs i'm gonna enter in the wrong number just okay well he's not gonna say anything one nine five seven yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck amazing stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway These are some narrow stairs. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find rows and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, <coughs> his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. There it is. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Yeah... So I'm not even sure what the ultimate truth really is. Uh, it's just a big An room. enormous control panel, Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. I'm so full of rage, I will climb towards these rafters. Ah, I will destroy the machine. Of course, I'm just doing what the narrator's telling me to do, so... The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. Ah, the closer I feel to freedom, and the further I feel from enslavement. Yeah, you tell me what to do, narrator. so angry I will destroy this generator oh, I gotta hold on to the button they couldn't make it that easy blackness power gone all alone and then As he stepped through the door, into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power, he had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now, he had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. 
Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. Okay, so I think that's the end of that one. All right, so we're going to play this again, and we're going to play it this time uh, going through the uh, worst set of options. Well, worst in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and skip the intro since we all know what it is. But yeah, here we go. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge because to check on his co-workers. Yeah, he's an he never person. functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total no solitude was me, terrifying I can't to him. Think my brains are leaking out of my face. When Stanley came to a set of two open yeah, doors, the door he entered the door on his left. Uh-huh. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. Well, no, he decided he would walk up to see his boss hoping that he would find an answer there. I'm horrified. Okay, good. The door's open. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But instead, he went downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss of admitting that he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it and a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling, until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No! Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn run to the nearest police station and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person. It was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observed from a distance and pity him. 
But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran. Okay, so that was the worst, in my opinion, that's the worst way to play through it. Now I'm going to go through my favorite way to play through it. Alright, so we all know the intro. Okay. This time, Stanley has an independent streak. And he's tired of listening to the weird voice in his head. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, Fuck you, and constantly voice. needed support and guidance from others. Shut so up! the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yeah, fuck you. I'm not going that way. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, no and shit. Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Oh, am I? No. Ooh, maybe I should go, but no. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere, and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Well, I do feel bad, and I probably should spank myself a little bit, but I can do that later. Oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know, you really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? No, you'll kill me. It would be so cool to pay, to pay Ross Scott to play this. Huh. I wonder how much that would cost. I could probably get a Kickstarter together. Now that. listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Stanley walked through the blue door. Gotcha. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Blue door. Got it. Stanley walked through the blue door. I am doing what he told me to do. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Stanley walked through the blue door. Got it. Blue door. I'm glad you specified it. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. <laughs> you see? It's nothing. No one's even built this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. It's just a bunch of skybox and dev wall textures. That's it. Is this what you were looking for? Was it worth ruining the story I'd written out for you? Yes. I put a lot of time into that, and now you... Well, here you are now, just looking at nothing. To think that that's all I needed to make in the first place, just a whole lot of nothing, and you would have been happy. Well, hey, you still need a little something to do. Am I right? Here, let me load up another map. See if there's something in here that'll keep you occupied. <sighs> ah, here's one. Let's boot this up. We'll see if you like it. <coughs> well, Stanny, is this any better? I don't know why it would be. This map wasn't even made for you. At least I created a world specifically with you in mind. I wanted to make you a leading man. This one, well, I'm afraid you're on your own there. Ah, the good old train station. I really ought to play Half-Life 2 again. Actually, you know what, here. 
Do you guys want me to do a Let's Play Half-Life 2? Write it down in the comments. You know, I, mean, I don't want to waste your time with something you guys don't want to see. Like this. You guys don't want to see me playing around on this. You want to know what's ahead. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> Stanley is really fat and stupid. He's addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> Is that? <coughs> Hold up, Westport. I spent so long talking about you. Why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Okay. Let's see. Well, according to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. Now, this is fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? Oh, no, of course not. All you want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, shit! Oh, no! I th I fucked up! Oh, God! Uh, Alright, um... See, the thing doesn't let you jump or crouch or anything, so this is actually me being stuck. I'm gonna have to cheat. Uh, I think I have cheats activated. One. It's. Come on, no clip. There. It's okay to cheat a little bit in circumstances like this, alright? Because in real life. Well, you'd be able to kind of walk sideways through that door. Come on. So, there. Alright, no clips off now. I'm not using it because I'm not stuck. There. <laughs> Alright. Can't pick up anything. No, so no, no. Okay, there we go. He added a, a ramp for me. That's nice. <sighs> Is this the end of the line? I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience for you, considering not a single art aspect in this map was created with you in mind. But hey, you're a creative kid. I bet you can come up with a story about this place and why you're in it. And while you're doing that, why don't you think up an ending too? Because you certainly won't find one here. I'm afraid that's the long and short of it. This room and these walls are all you get. Maybe the story ends when you decide you can't live in this futuristic science fiction dystopia world and you gallantly commit suicide. Or maybe you stand in this spot for all of eternity to guide and greet other travelers like yourself who pass this way. Or maybe you just get bored and you quit the game. Heck, anything's an ending if that's where you stop playing. But whatever ending you write for yourself, Stanley, you won't have my help. You turned your back on me, and now I do the same to you. So, good luck. I think you'll need it. And I sincerely hope that everyone lives happily ever after. Yeah, well, screw you. I never needed you anyway. I'll build my own never-ending map with blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the map. Wait. Ow! Hold on. What are you? What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it, you know that. Stanley, come back. And now we're back here. But believe it or not, this is not the ending. 
I mean, this is close to the end, but we haven't ended it yet. It's at this point you could either turn off the game or continue to explore around a little bit. And I think if you notice, all the uh, doors are open. Although I'm pretty sure this is never gonna come up. But yeah, all the doors are open. And no doors are closing behind you. It's sad, I know, but all stories must come to an end. Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. And for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. And that was the Stanley Parable. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, seriously, if you've got Steam, you've got Half-Life 1, I think that's the only thing that's required, uh, you should totally download this thing and check it out, because it is definitely worth a play. And uh, anyway, that's, that's a wrap, and I will see you later. Signing out.